It's back to school time, and this year I am going back with ease. So I'm getting my parents to sign up for Flo's super fast broadband service. Now I will have all the right tools needed to excel. Flo has a special offer when my parents pay only fifty dollars monthly for three months. Plus, my name will be entered into a grand prize draw to win a laptop, and I will also receive free items including notebooks, pencils, and a backpack. This year, I plan to be on the top of my game. So be like me. Sign up today, and you'll be on your way to learning made easy with Flow. Flow, watch, talk, click. This is CC6 News Night, week in review for September 9th to September 12th, 2013. It was the week in which the government declared that Camahon Park is not for sale. The Board of Tourism learned the date it will no longer exist, and two courts were closed for urgent repairs to their electrical system. In sports, lights coming soon for the National Cricket Stadium. Stay with us, we'll bring you details when we return. Now it's easier and more convenient to pay your flow monthly bills when you use the check drop box at our Dusty Highway office. Simply write your name and account number on an envelope with your check enclosed and deposit it into the check box or write your phone number at the back of the check, attach the check to the bottom portion of your bill, then deposit it into the check box. It's that easy. For more information on bill payment option, visit our website at www.discoverflow.co. Flow. Watch. Talk. Click. It's a popular belief that all windows and doors are the same. But at St. Lou Metal, we know the difference. With true Grenadian craftsmanship and precision that gives the best quality and low guaranteed prices, you have a wide variety of windows and doors to choose from. Skylight windows, two half kitchen doors, aluminum doors with window inside and screen. We are the doors and windows people. St. Lou Metal, building number 19, Frequente Industrial Park. Call 439-6538. Thanks for joining us. I am Samantha Williams Worm. There have been talks that government has sold some prime property in Grand Ant to a foreign investor for development. But one official says this is not the case and would not be except a lucrative offer for a better recreational facility is made. Minister of Implementation Senator Kenny Lal Singh says despite rumors circulating, Kamohan Park is not for sale, at least not yet. The senator addressed the issue at post-cabinet briefing at the ministerial complex on Tuesday. Well, the rumors going around that we are selling the lands which house Kamahan Park. This is totally untrue. We will not dispose of Kamahan Park except we have a better park to replace it. Let it be very clear. We will not dispose of Kamahan Park except there is a better facility that can replace the present Kamahan Park. So I want the public to rest assured that there is no truth in this matter at this time. Senator Lyle Singh says, however, the Riviera property adjacent to Kamahan Park will soon be developed into another hotel by a foreign investor. We are quite assured that this investor has what it takes to put on Granite Beach a five-star up hotel. As a matter of fact, we have taken a decision that the entire Granite Beach should be five star up, nothing less than five star hotels. Because what we realize that the tourism industry, the hotels which benefit a lot better are the ones that have the better um, service, better class, and so Granite should be made of that kind of class factor. He says, however, they are open to the idea of selling Kamahan Park if a beneficial offer arises. If it so happens that there can be a better developed Kamahan Park in a different area, more enhanced, better facilities, and we believe 
it will mean more to Grenada and its people, we will consider it. But for the time being, Kamahan Park remains there for the pleasure of the people. CC6 Newsnight spoke with some users of Kamahan Park on the issue. If Kamahan Park is sold, and then it is not to be convenient, it would not be convenient for us to come and relax. We've been deprived. We've been be deprived very much, and we're going to miss that. Kamahan Park is a nice place, and I hope they get rid of it because it's a nice place. Everybody just come and enjoy themselves, sit down, relax, and have so I hope they keep it and not sell it. Senator Lao Singh says the environment is ever-changing and an offer could be made for the purchase of Kamahan Park if an investor comes on board to construct a new facility. But in the meantime, the property remains in the hands of the government and people of Grenada. Reporting from Kamahan Park, Blossom Alexis Welsh, CC6 Newsnight. A team of officials has been in Grenada for a little more than a week, focusing on a number of issues including the current economic situation, debt restructuring and government's plans and priorities for the new economy. A team from the International Monetary Fund is expected to wrap up a crucial and important two-week visit to Grenada on Friday. In an interview on Tuesday, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Timothy Antoine, says the focus of the visit is to examine and assess Grenada's current economic situation and work toward a formal program between government and the IMF. He says this month's tour is a follow-up to a previous mission in June. The first mission was a scoping mission coming right after the new administration had come in and after the budget had been presented. Uh, this one now is sort of with six months um, of implementation on the way and you know having had the transition take place uh, this is now focused on what has what is the current situation so we're looking at what has happened in 2013 with both the fiscal side and economic activity um, and then we're making projections for the years 2014 2015 and 2016 in particular um, to see um, what areas um, we can work together to deliver on the government's key objectives of economic growth and job creation. A big focus, he says, is what are the activities and investments needed to help the economy grow, recognizing that to achieve this, the process has to be led by private sector and supported by government. What are the policies that the government can implement? Whether it is on the uh, investment promotion side, whether it is on the f fiscal policy, um, small business development, what are the things the government can do to stimulate economic activity and encourage private sector investment? What is it that the government must do to help the private sector get into in the investment at a faster rate, whether it is local investment or foreign direct investment, to create jobs? Um, what are the bottlenecks that need to be removed? Um, what are the key products that the government must invest in over the next several years? Um, there are a lot of interesting products around, but the key is with limited resources, both grant and concessionary loans, the government has to make very important strategic choices and trade-offs about what it invests in. For the last few weeks, the Permanent Secretary says they have been working on a core public sector investment program that covers the next three to five years that sets out the key projects that government will be looking to invest in. They will also discuss various policies that can be implemented. The debt restructuring is a very important part of the government economic policy going forward. And um, what the debt restructuring does is to give Grenada um, a more manageable terms on which to service its, its public debt. So when we finish this discussion with the IMF, um, the plan is to, to formally launch a debt exchange, mm -hmm. um, the, f the formal debt restructuring, um, so that the creditors will know, not just from Grenada, but from the IMF, what it is that Grenada needs. Not what the creditors want, what does Grenada need at this time in respect of debt relief to enable it to return to a path of growth and sustain growth such that growth will occur, jobs will be created, and the government and the country will be able to service its debt on a timely basis. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell has emphasized that any formal arrangement made with the IMF must have growth and job creation as its central focus. The Grenada Board of Tourism is on its way out and will be replaced by a new entity, the Grenada Tourism Authority. But the transition comes with termination of services for everyone currently employed to the board. As of December 9th, the Grenada Board of Tourism will no longer exist and come December 10th, the Grenada Tourism Authority will take full charge of the island's tourism product.
This was announced by Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation, Honourable Alexandra Otway Noel, when she addressed a news conference at the Ministry of Works on Wednesday. More than $3 million is being spent for the transition, she says, and the unions have been notified via letter issued on Tuesday of the impending winding up of the Board of Tourism. We have budgeted $3.5 million for this transition. We, we said so in the, in the budget, the last budget that we presented. And um, we are currently negotiating with Tau on a few other issues. So somewhere in that vicinity. And, um, you know, we're confident that, that the staff will be well taken care of. Since 2012, then Director of Tourism and now Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Community Development, Simon Steele, had been leading the charge to have the transition made. Termination letters were distributed to the staff but later withdrawn after government decided to halt the process. Mrs Otway Noel says the way is now clear for the establishment of the Tourism Authority as consultations have been held with hospitality and tourism sector stakeholders and all plans are in place for staff to receive their severance pay. We have um, ongoing negotiations with TAU to ensure that um, the employees of the Grenada Board of Tourism are taken care of the way they ought to be and in keeping with the labor codes and so on. We will be advertising for the positions of CEO and head of marketing and so on for the Grenada Tourism Authority. And I have been pressing because of course the um, next tourism season is almost upon us and we would like to have the Tourism Authority up and running by the latest early December. Main consultant on the project is former Minister of Tourism for Barbados, Noel Lynch. He says some positions that existed in the Board of Tourism will not be required in the Tourism Authority, but all positions will be advertised and Board of Tourism staff will be able to apply for jobs they have interest in. The Technical and Allied Workers Union, we are in negotiations with them in relation to the human resource complement of the Grenada Tourism Authority. Let me say from the beginning, um, um, Mr. Humphrey, I'm sure, will tell you this. He is in full endorsement of the concept of the creation of the tourism authority. That's the first thing. The second thing is, however, is that um, we are going to dissolve the Grenada Board of Tourism. The Grenada Board of Tourism's dissolution is going to call for severing all existing staff of the GBT, all. In addition to that, however, uh, there, there, are, there are a core of people within the GBT that we are going to negotiate with, and I will not identify them here in terms of either names or numbers, obviously, but there's a core of people that must, or they will be given the opportunity to be in the interview process as everybody else. The minister also said some responsibilities held by the Board of Tourism, like security and beach cleaning, will not be transferred to the authority, as its core function will be marketing and development of Grenada's tourism product. Wayne Francis Wright, CC6 Newsnight. When we return, hospital reports increase in revenue collection. Only one dishwashing liquid can do the job. Quix is the expert in taking out the toughest grease easily. You know you can trust it. Quix cuts grease better, full stop. Digital makes you smile. Double the smiles, double the value. Free SMS, free international and local. Free magic number calls. Extra credit when you top up. Top up 10 or more. And get rewarded for your top up. Digital gives you more to keep you smiling. Get free SMS when you top up with $10. Magic number calls when you top up with $15. Free international ones you top up with $20. Ordinary Digicel. Breeze removes stains in the first wash. The other detergents, not always. You have to wash it all again and use twice the amount. So, which one costs more? Do the math. Choose Breeze. Unbeatable stain removal.
Welcome back. According to information released by the government, some urgent electrical repairs have forced the temporary closure of the number two magistrate's court and the number one Supreme Court. But this has raised some major concerns among members of the legal profession. Legal practitioners and members of the general public have been hit with the news that with immediate effect, two of the courtrooms in St. George's have been temporarily closed and no indication has been given in relation to their reopening. Court number two of the Magistrates Court and the number one Supreme Court have been closed apparently for renovations until further notice. And a local attorney says this is sure to have adverse effects on pending cases and will cause a further backlog in the already congested list of scheduled cases. Attorney at law Ruggles Ferguson spoke to CC6 Newsnight in an interview on Tuesday. What I understand is in the course of doing certain um, repairs or renovations, it was discovered that there were certain critical things that needed to be done and therefore um, the decision was taken to do it one time and of course doing it one time would affect the operations of the court. What I understand though because notwithstanding the fact that the court the number two is closed the magistrate in the number two court has been utilizing the number three court um, to adjourn matters and have been dealing with matters in a very limited way. The criminal assizes is scheduled to begin on October 1st and Mr. Ferguson explains how closures may affect its opening. For the criminal assizes, um, it's, that's well under a month away. Of course it would affect it because uh, you need the court, uh, even unlike civil matters where you don't have a jury, so you may be able to improvise um, and set up a temporary location for the sitting of the civil court. For the criminal court, you have jurors. So apart from the judge, the, judge, the lawyers on both sides, you have jurors. And therefore, it's a bit more challenging to find an alternative venue at short notice for the trial of criminal matters. So it will affect it if um, repairs take that long. Mr. Ferguson says he also has cases pending in the courts and a number of them have to be rescheduled and deliberated in the afternoon sessions at other courtrooms. He says, however, he has been assured that all efforts are being made to get the courts back in operation. I am not aware of a date being set for reopening. What the court has indicated, though, is that they are making all efforts to have the matter dealt with as speedily as possible and hopefully with the work over time of the persons from the Ministry of Works that we can have the court um, operation, operation, back in operation uh, very soon, hopefully not beyond uh, next week. Wayne Francis Wright, CC6 Newsnight. The Ministry of Health's plan to increase revenue collection at the General Hospital seems to be going according to plan. But a senior government minister says there are still some improvements to be made with the system before it go, gets to where they want it to be. The Billing and Admissions Department of the General Hospital is up and running and Minister of Health Honorable Clarice Mades Kerwin says they have been able to monitor patients and payments made for services received at the facility. Addressing a recent post-cabinet briefing, Minister Mades Kerwin says the department has been living up to expectations. We have a better way system of tracking the patients that are in hospital because previously uh, patients generally come from different areas. Most come from accident and emergency and assenting, but sometimes physicians send in the patients who go directly to the ward. And therefore, we do not capture those um, from the administrative point of view. These patients go onto the ward, staff know about them, they're treated, and they go back out. And the hospital doesn't have a comprehensive record of those patients or get an opportunity to charge whatever applicable fees they are. So um, we have set that up and they're doing much better. There's still room for a lot of improvement, but certainly the collections. She says revenues are coming in. However, it does not reflect the actual cost to provide health care services. There have been recommendations to increase some fees, but we are well aware that these are still tough economic times and people are still grappling with their 
serious commitments and i'm talking about serious commitments because i know still in these tough economic times persons do spend money on things that are not necessary i can't say priorities it might be their priorities but not necessary and sometimes these very persons refuse to pay a five dollars or ten dollars for medication and we all know that Let, let's face it but some are very willing to pay the health minister says there are still a number of things that have to be sorted out before the billing and admissions department is running at full force. We don't want to get so drastic because we realize that it's going to take a lot of time, one, to change the mindset and to create the understanding that healthcare is expensive and that everyone who can contribute should contribute. It's going to take a while. Also, it's going to take a while for us to adequately prepare for our indigent so that somebody doesn't have to walk all around and beg for a free x-ray or a free, free blood test. If the seed program of the social services is working well and um, the IT program becomes um, in force where they can provide us with the, the um, ID cards, then these people should have something that when it is swiped, it immediately comes up and I'm told it can be done. She says more increases for services at the General Hospital may be announced in the upcoming budget presentation. The ministry is also working on establishing the national health insurance and a committee has been put in place to see that this happens. They are in the process of acquiring a consultant versed in this area to assist with the implementation. Blossom Alexis Welsh, CC6 Newsnight. The protection and preservation of historical artifacts on the island have been a major issue for various stakeholder groups. And one such work of art is the Wallace Fountain, housed at the grounds of the Alliance Francaise de la Grenade at the villa in St. George. The arrival in Grenada of a French water fountain known as a Wallace Fountain is, to date, a mystery. But the fountain first used in France for poorer sections of society to have access to clean drinking water is still in Grenada, although it is no longer functional. It was acquired by the late Dr. Alistair Hughes and his wife Cynthia and is part of a collection of artifacts owned by the couple. The fountain is the brainchild of English philanthropist Sir Richard Wallace and was first built in 1872. In an interview with CC6 Newsnight, independent artist and consultant to the Grenada Arts Council, Su Lin Lao Chu Tong, gives some historical background to the fountain. This is called a, a Wallace Fountain. Uh, this particular fountain is on the grounds of Alliance Francaise in, in the villa in St. George's. Um, it's dated back to 1872. It's on loan to Alliance from the Cynthia Hughes collection. A uh, brief history, this fountain was one of a hundred and something uh, made in um, 1872, thereabouts, um, at the bequest of um, Sir Richard Wallace, um, who was a British uh, philanthropist. The original idea behind the fountains was to provide clean drinking water to those who could not afford it. He had a French artist uh, sculpt these fountains because once he went to Paris uh, in France and he found that there was nowhere to, to get a glass of water. Um, and that the, the poor people couldn't afford clean drinking water. So he thought, no, no, this is not right. So he went, uh, went ahead and organized to have these um, sculptural fountains made. And one of them ended up in Grenada. Uh, that part of it, we don't know exactly who brought it. All we know, it landed here and it was sitting in the, functioning actually, in the market square in St. George's for many years. Um, it was removed in the 1960s um, by the city council for some strange unknown reason. Um, and Alistair Hughes um, decided that, oh, this can't happen. So he picked it up and got um, assistance to, to rehabilitate it and to make it function again. Miss Lo Chu Tong says the fountain was moved to its present location at the villa in St. George's, apparently until the marketplace returned to its former status. But over the years, with changes in design, it has never been returned to its original home. Although the fountain was renovated in 2003, it was again damaged during the passage of Hurricane Ivan in 2004. But artist Lo Cho Tong says the technical expertise is available on the island to restore it to its former glory. The original restoration done um, under Alistair Hughes was done with an uh, uh, artist resident here who is Maria McClafferty. And she was assisted by Mr. Ross um, of Ross Works. Uh, he's in Westerhall somewhere, does um, Iron Mongery. Um, and between the two of them, they made it work. So um, 
I'm happy to say that they are both still alive, as far as I'm aware. And I mean, Ministry of Work should contact them to have um, the fountain um, refurbished to what it once was, because obviously they have had experience in fixing this particular fountain. She says she believes this piece of Grenadian history should be returned to its original position in the market square and could be a tourist attraction. Wayne Francis Wright, CC6 Newsnight. Coming up in sports, a number of training seminars planned for Grenada. Call me, call me, call me down. Nothing can of hard in the country. So I open up your hey, yes. hey, In hey. order that I should marry. When did, did you jump so car? Friendliest people you'll ever meet. Wise man with black stone beside you. <laughs> Live on Community Channel Z every Saturday. 2, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's Sound System Saturday. Grenada, you are being watched by the hardest hitting commentary team ever assembled and they tell you as they see it every Monday at 8 p.m. on Community Channel 6. Watchdog. Biting commentary. A biting commentary. Repeat broadcast Saturdays at 8 p.m. <laughs> biting commentary. Welcome back. The government of Grenada says they are taking a serious look into the lighting of the National Cricket Stadium to better facilitate the hosting of regional and international tournaments and matches. Minister of Implementation in the Prime Minister's Ministry, Senator Kenny Lousing, during a post-cabinet briefing on Tuesday, says they are taking a more proactive approach to the lighting of the facility. He says mainly because they are optimistic about the effects this can have on the country's sports tourism. The government is very anxious to get a project up and running. We need to light the cricket stadium so then Grenada next year can enjoy the luxury of T20 matches. We in Grenada need to make sure that our people can enjoy the stadium like other um, countries are doing, make sure that we can bring the matches here because we think there's a lot of potential for sports tourism. Sports tourism, he says, can be of enormous economic benefit to the country. Government is more anxious than you to get it done. But I do not want to give you any timeline. But we are anxious. We are looking at various proposals in terms of costing. And as soon as we decide on which company to go with, the public will know. He says they are still in the planning stage of the project. However, they will be making more serious headway in the coming months. In football, plans are being put in place to host several football training seminars in Grenada. So says newly appointed General Secretary of the Grenada Football Association, Christopher Cujo. Mr. Cujo says there are a lot of courses and training seminars coming up and he expects the participation to be great. We have the, the D license, which is a coaching education course. It's coming up at the end of September, and it's a regional course that CONCACAF is sponsoring. So we'll be having participants from uh, 10 CONCACAF uh, member countries coming to Grenada, and we have three spots for Grenadian coaches. He says it can only benefit Grenada in a positive way. And what that does is that it, it brings us on a, a tier system where coaches can learn and, and achieve a certain standard up the tier D, C, B, A, and so forth. And with that, they can, you know, access uh, games throughout the, the, the region, be able to work in other territories. So that, that's good investment in our football infrastructure here. In uh, October, we have the Women's Community Seminar and Festival. 
And what that is, is a, it's a three-day seminar, and a, the last day is a festival where we bring everybody together. That's where we're targeting stakeholders, sponsors, government, parents, sporting associations, etc., to whip up support for women's soccer. Uh, FIFA has mandated that um, the future of soccer is feminine. And we're trying to get into the communities to make sure that the people understand the message, that uh, interest is created, that uh, our kids understand that there are opportunities that... The upcoming sessions will be declared open by CONCACAF President Jeff Webb, who will also meet with local football officials and other stakeholders before returning home to the Cayman Islands. And finally, the Spice Girls will face Trinidad and Tobago in Haiti this month in their opening match in the final round of the Caribbean Football Union Women's Under-17 Qualifiers. The Spice Girls in Group B is drawn alongside Trinidad and Tobago, Bermuda and the Dominican Republic, whom they met in the qualifying round of the tournament. The final round will be played in two groups from September 18th to 30th, with the top teams advancing to the CONCACAF Under-17 Finals, scheduled for Jamaica from October 30th to November 9th. The TNT-Grenada match will be the second of a doubleheader on September 21st, with the Dominican Republic and Bermuda playing the first game. Grenada will take on the rivals Dominican Republic in the second encounter of the tournament two days later and will it conclude their campaign against Bermuda on September 25th. That's all we have for you in Sports on 6. A recap of the headlines is next. Recapping the headlines, it was the week in which government declared that Kamahan Park is not for sale. The Board of Tourism learned the date it will no longer exist, and two courts were closed for urgent repairs to the electrical system. And sports lights coming soon for the National Cricket Stadium. That brings us to the end of CC6 Newsnight Week in Review for September 9th to September 12, 2013. Top stories from CC6 Newsnight can also be seen on our Facebook page, Flow Community Channel 6. On behalf of the news team, I'm Samantha Williams-Worm, thanking you for joining us. Thank you.